get my six. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Homesteading Off the Grid. <clears throat> so, if you read the title uh, about why some people can see and hear these things and others can't, I'm just going to address this as we take a walk around here, show you a couple things. We just had a huge storm come through. Uh, some people can see and some people can hear that which others can't. I just heard a fox. There's a fox winning up here. We're about 30 minutes away from sundown. Uh, the biggest part is because most people don't even look and they never even listen. They don't care. They're apathetic. Uh, they have simply bought into this concept that some things are real, some things are not. Then there's, of course, the issue of faith, the belief in things unseen. And then there's clutter. There's noise. Uh <clears throat> If you spend the majority of your time glued to gadgets, I mean, it, it's terrible. This sounds kind of like hip, like a hypocrisy on my part as a YouTuber. Uh, I would like you to be glued to my videos, but at the same time, I don't want you glued to anything too much, even if it's my videos. Uh, or if you watch the news, mainstream media, you get bogged down in politics, that kind of stuff. That noise, it, 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 it becomes clutter in your brain. It's like, you know, people that never throw anything away can become hoarders. And their homes, their living spaces are filled with all this stuff, but it's meaningless and it's crap. And you know what? You can't see the important stuff. The stuff worth having, the, the, the necessities, the things you need are difficult to find because you just got so much crap everywhere. Well, the brain works the same way. So, uh, here, just over the last few days, I've been making a lot of videos that have to do with uh, synchronicity. God shots, as I, I've learned to call these things throughout the years, and as I've, I've heard other people say as well, uh, and yeah, I'm walking backwards because this is part of my strategy. You know my strategy if you've been here for any period of time. All right, I'm gonna use an example as I walk into the woods here of something that happened today, the day after the hummingbird experience, at the same day as the really odd lightning strike. If you saw the video from earlier today, if you didn't, you need to go watch it. <clears throat> but I'll put it to you this way. Uh, the more you can learn to look and listen, the better you'll be able to see and hear. The less junk you clog your mind with, uh, the more space you'll have for the important stuff. Now, I'll tell you, I just heard what sounded like a <laughs> Think of this, it's raining. So we've got a weather event, we've got water. We've just entered the forest. We are where field meets forest and we're on the top of the hill. And the sun is setting. The veil is very thin right now, so watch behind me very closely. So, <clears throat> wait, wait, let me let me switch phone. I This is the same spot, oh my gosh. Same spot where a week ago to the day, this is Friday evening as of this recording, last Friday, 
This thing was on this limb, jumped over to that pine tree, shimmied down, and now it just jumped from another tree, knocked down another limb. I heard the hooping, I heard the hooping. I hooped back. Oh my gosh. Guys, bear with me. Let me zoom. There is something big in this forest with us right now. So big that when it travels from treetop to treetop, like you just heard, and as you saw last week, it breaks entire limbs with its mass. Those are raindrops you see falling. Well, a few days ago, I made a video where I was answering the question about <clears throat> what would I do if one of these things came at me? Bruh, <laughs> said I'd run like hell. Proof, but the show must go on. I got out of the woods. I don't know what that thing is, but you heard it today. You heard it a week ago. We caught that on film. There's something so big and it travels in the treetops. It's so big, it's so heavy, that at times when it jumps from treetop to treetop, it breaks limbs. I know a lot of folks come here for the Bigfoot Sasquatch, potentially, and all that stuff. Um, I think it's a puma, but that thing between those trees looked to be upright and tall, and I've never seen a puma that looked anything like that. Uh, but I wanna finish this story. Am I gonna go back up there? Potentially, potentially not. <clears throat> but I want to tell you this story, okay? Because the show must go. The show must go on. Look, get rid of all that media, politics, uh, really crappy stuff that's going on in the world. Don't let that fill your brain. Get out here and fill your brain uh, with the beauty of nature. Uh, you know, if you don't live in a place like this, go hiking, go to a park, go to a beach if you live on a coast. But unless the weather is severe, if it's daytime, I'm usually out here. And I'm going to talk about the synchronicity thing here real quick, but the sun is going down quickly. And I don't know what in the hell that thing was. So I want to hurry up and get this story in and, and show you the evidence of this. This is really amazing. So one of the things I like to do is every morning after my run or my bike, if I go biking, yeah, you gotta do a cool down anyway. So I always just walk around this place to do my cool down and I, I look at everything and I, and I and I notice, you know, what's going on, uh, see if there's any changes, any trees that have fallen, you know, on my property I need to go cut up um, or, you know, is there a certain place needs weeded or whatever. But I came home from a run about 10 days or so ago and I was walking here in front of, we're not using this garden this year. It's all grown up because we, we've got two very successful gardens back here. We didn't have time to deal with the third. So you'll have to excuse that mess. But like our pond is right here, see? So I, I, I came home, walked up the driveway. Um, that's the house. Looked at the pond. I always looked at fish and all that. And I was, keep walking and there was a, there was a turtle right here. It was an eastern painted turtle. They're very beautiful aquatic turtles. They live in ponds. They have um, really bright red and yellow stripes on their faces and on their their shells. And I, I noticed it, it was a female laying eggs, right? So what she had done is she she dug out a hole right here. Let's see if I can get the phone closer. She can get a really good view. She she dug out a hole right there with her hind legs, backed up in there and just. Let out all these eggs. She was here for probably half an hour doing this. No, I kept my distance. I kept my distance so as not to scare. 
or not to interfere with this process. And I came out later because I just kind of wanted to see um, if she was still there. You know, after I watched her for a while, wanted to make sure everything was okay with what she'd been doing there. And I could tell where she had buried those eggs. And so I wanted to make sure I, that I didn't run them over with my zero turn mower whenever I, you know, um, come down here and mow. There's the pond, isn't that beautiful? Everything's so lush and green and we just had a massive thunderstorm. Ooh, I see a, a tree guard I gotta fix. So uh, I was like, I gotta mark where she laid those eggs so I don't run them over because I don't want to crush them. So I just walked into my, my garage <clears throat> And I saw these tie-down straps. So I grabbed that red one, put it there, intending to maybe put up something more permanent later. But that will suffice. So there it is. I know where that uh, that turtle turtle's eggs nest is, and I know not to run over that spot now with my zero turn. I won't. I googled it. it takes them 72 eggs to hatch, or 72 days to hatch. So we're looking at August, first of August, because it was mid-May when she laid those. Right. So that's about 10 days or so ago. So today I went running uh, in between storms and I didn't do much because I'm a little, well, I just only ran for 20 minutes and I didn't go hard. But when I, I got out of my gate out here and I start going up the road and uh, just right around the next turn over in the weeds, I saw, let me give you this view. This is the fruit orchard that I, I trimmed the weeds down out of the other day. If you watch that video, it's really beautiful. Um, there was like this green tie down strap, like that red thing, but it was green. And I, I mean, I'm not like a, here I was, you know, bashing the concept of hoarding earlier. I don't hoard. Um, if I have something that I haven't used in at least a year, I get, I like, I'll get rid of it. If it's something that isn't used don't you know, like sleeves for a dinner table that you might need to put in once a year at Thanksgiving. I keep stuff like that, but, it, um, I, I don't like to have clutter. I don't like to have crap. So I'm running and I see this green strap. And my first thought is I need to pick that up and take that home with me after my run today. Um, it, it just flown off the back of someone's truck. And I find some really neat stuff when I'm out running and stuff. And if it's close to my home and it's actually something I'll use, sometimes I take it. I've found just recently around here, I'll find fishing lures, unopened fishing lures that just fall out of somebody's truck. I found a box of nails. I find all, all kinds of rope. So I saw that strap. I thought, well, I'm going to get that on the way home. But then during my run, I was like, I don't need one more strap. There's, I have no use for that strap. I've got a couple dozen of them. Don't become a you know clutter collector like so many folks. That's one of my pet peeves. And so <clears throat> I, I decided in my mind, I'm not going to get this strap. So I go up 10 minutes, do my turnaround, come back. And when I ran past that strap again, and it was on the opposite side of the road I usually run on. So to forgive the noise there of a car. That's why we planted these beautiful privacy hedges that are growing quickly and doing their job quickly. Um, but I ended up running on that side of the road because I, I was coming back too fast and it was meant to be an easy run. But I, was, I have this thing about negative splitting my runs. That's when you come back faster than you go out. I always do it. So I started like really slowing down. I thought, well, I'll run over on that side of the road because that's the outside of the turn and that'll cost me some time because I just, I'm really just trying to slow down so I didn't run this too fast. So I run past that strap again and I'm on the side of the road that I'd never run on that side on the way back. And I just, in, I just in one swoop went down, grabbed that strap, brought it back up. And then in my mind, I said, well, why did I grab this strap? I just told myself for this entire three mile run, I don't need any more of these straps. Look at this plum tree. It's got beautiful plums on it. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. I can't wait to eat those. But I grabbed the strap. So then when I came home, came through the gate, way back there, I came walking through my fruit orchard to admire Look at this. I mean, these weeds were everywhere, but I've cut them down and I can see the trees better now. And I just wanted to admire my fruit orchard as I started my cool down. Like I taught, taught you about, I got right here, I have a giant peach tree here. It's one of our biggest trees, the first one we planted. I look past this peach tree, guess what I see?
There was a female eastern painted turtle right here with her butt backed up in a hole, laying eggs. So I instantly knew why I needed that strap. I'm telling you, that was a frog. A lot of the reason so many people can't see and they can't hear is because they don't look and they don't listen. Get rid of the junk, get rid of the media, get rid of the politics, get rid of the stuff that divides. Uh, go out in nature, commune with nature, and listen to the great spirit. And when you're alone in the woods, and something large, and as of yet unidentified, that may be responsible for, may be responsible for a lot of missing pets, if not missing people, get the hell out of the woods. See you for more next time.